Hi again then guys and welcome to another specific look back to the early days of the Forza franchise, once again to Forza 2, to take a look at, on this occasion, another aftermarket car, but the difference between this one and quite a few of the others, even some of the other Evos you could say, like the Sparco for instance, this is not from a company who are necessarily just showing off parts that they offer or a particular trim option because when it comes to tuning there are definitely some aftermarket companies which go way beyond that and this is something which I've talked about before I would include companies in there as Roof, Gembala, Mines, Tommy Kyra, Hennessy those kind of aftermarket manufacturers who don't just slap a big turbo on something or put a few stickers on and call it their own these are companies who basically re-overhaul a particular vehicle or vehicles and turn it into something that feels legitimately new. Something like the Tommy Kyra R Skyline, or the Mines Skylines, or on this occasion, the Mines Evo. Now the Evo is a great base to work from, because at the end of the day it's already such a good performance car, it's essentially a rally car for the road to begin with, so when you have a vehicle that is kind of rally and street bred together, it just gives you so much to work with. And there's a reason, of course, why the Evo is such a popular and such a respected car anyway, just like its main rival, the Impreza, is also. Now, Mines, in its own right, is a massively respected company for basically the same reasons. They do what they do very, very well. Now, this particular car isn't necessarily quite as much of an obvious option of aftermarket car as some of the Skylines are. From Mines, be it the R32 or the R34, it certainly doesn't have their kind of power. But, being an Evo, it's a different kind of performance, because whereas the Skylines, in a similar way to stuff like the Supra, they tend to be more of a top-tier, almost exotic end of the JDM spectrum, something like an Evo, or you could say maybe an RX-8 to some degree, and a couple of others too, they tend to be more the technical approach to a JDM car. They don't typically have a massive amount of power, unless you specifically go out and do that to them, because they don't really need to. They're more about the technical performance, be it acceleration and handling with a little bit of top speed thrown in there as well. They're more the kind of car that would be appropriate for time attack or, again, for rallying. They're just purpose-built for that from the get-go. They're very hardcore, they're very focused. There's basically only what needs to be there to accomplish that performance goal. And in the case of a car like this, they basically take everything that the Evo is already good at, be that acceleration off the line, low-end grip, and also to some degree a very forgiving nature to its performance, not necessarily quite as forgiving as a Subaru, I would say, even though I do prefer the Evo, the Evo, I would also say, has a sharper edge than a WRX does, at least to me. Now, this particular car is putting out quite a bit more power than the standard one. You're looking at a quoted, as many JDM cars are, 276 horsepower from a normal Evo. This one, on the other hand, is putting out 404 and almost 300 pound feet of torque. Now, in a car that only weighs 1360 kilos, which, when you bear in mind, it is still a four door, five seater, all wheel drive, decent sized sedan. 1360 kilos is actually very very good that's only 10 kilos more than a gt3 car or at least certain gt3 cars from a few years ago like the z4 or the nissan gtr for instance now the price is quite high on this one many if not most in fact of the aftermarket cars on forza 2 had six figure prices this one does as well it's 171,000 credits and the category is moderate. It's not ridiculously high, but it is fairly high. It's A727. But, being an Evo, as I said, you've already got great performance, so something with 400 horsepower, essentially the equivalent to an FQ400, in effect, you've got a lot of potential there. And there's a good reason why many people consider the Evo 5, and particularly the Evo 6, to be kind of the best of them all. A lot of people love the Evo 10 or the Evo 8 for obvious reasons, but the Evo 6 
might be the most popular choice from what I've seen at least in the majority of racing games that feature a number of Evos, because it's such a strong all-rounder. Now this one I would say is an excellent choice of track car, in particular as far as the aftermarket cars go, and that may seem like an obvious thing to say given that all of the tracks in the game are, by definition, circuits. It's not a free-roaming game, but at the same time, I'm sure you guys can also recognise that there are track cars and then there are track cars. There are cars that you can take on a track, but you can instantly feel that they don't want to be there. They're not supposed to be. They are road performance cars. But then there are others which feel more at home on the track than they do on the road. Something like a Catrum, for instance. Now with an Evo, and this goes back to what I said earlier, it's got that fantastic flair and twist to it in a similar way to the Impreza, again, where you can take it on the track and it feels at home, but you can also take it on the dirt and it feels at home as well. Now, I will say that the Mines Evo has a distinctly more track-focused flair to it than it does a rally car flair. It's much tighter, stiffer, more aggressive than the rally versions would typically be. They're a little softer and more forgiving. Not that this one isn't, but it definitely feels like what it is, which is a track car, and the performance is great. Now, of course, you can upgrade the performance even further, but in a similar way to what I said a little while ago about the Tommy Kyra R Skyline, it feels like one of those cars which, although you can make it faster, you don't necessarily need to, at least as far as power goes. You could drop the weight, you could put it on better tyres, you could maybe stiffen up the suspension and the brakes a little bit more if you wanted to, but as far as power goes, it feels so finely tuned and so expertly done that you almost don't really need to do much to it. It feels so good already. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't tune it, it's got the potential to, for sure, and the fact that the car already has so much more power shows that it can cope with it very easily. But it's a car which I would recommend trying out without doing anything to it, at least once. Because there are certain cars where, and I'm sure you can think of occasions, you buy them and then you just immediately tune it, probably quite heavily, and you never even think to drive the car in its stock form. At least that happens to me a fair amount, because you already know what the car's going to handle like, and all you're interested in is what it can do when it's heavily tuned, be it for racing or just for fun. Whereas with a car like this, because Tommy Kyra, or in this case Mines, really has such a great level of expertise at what they do, I would at least encourage you to try out what they've done to the car before taking it in your own direction, because you can sometimes be surprised by just how excellent a car like this can already be. So this one's certainly worth a look in the older games, unfortunately not featured anywhere near as much in the latter part of the franchise, and that's it for this particular review, so it's certainly one to check out, and I'll see you guys next time. But for now, as always, thanks for watching.